Hello everybody and welcome to another Ukraine war update. I missed a lot of videos worth noting that were released during the last few days so today we will take a look at them. The first video was filmed by a drone and shows a Russian tank driving right into a block of anti-tank mines that were laid in the middle of a road. Although the mines were clearly visible from the drone, it seems the tank crew did not manage to spot them. It's important to note that visibility from inside a tank is generally poor unless you open the hatch and stick your head out. However, this is quite dangerous, especially in situations where contact with the enemy is expected. The crew appears to have managed to leave the scene. The tank looks like to have been a T-62, so it was an older variant of Russia's T-series of tanks. I am not quite sure about the location here, but it is reported that this was filmed in the Donetsk blast. There are quite a few videos out there showing similar incidents and to be honest mines are one of the biggest problems tanks have to face on the battlefield. I do not mean to defend the Russians here but things like this happen in war especially with conscripts. Speaking of mines there was also another drone video that recently got released showing a Russian vehicle driving over a mine as well. This time it is reported that the Russians drove over their own mine near the famous Antoninovsky bridge near Kherson. Here the soldiers inside also left the vehicle directly afterwards. There have been reports of Ukrainian forces crossing the river in the area to establish a bridgehead. It is said that the area currently is only poorly defended by Russian forces who relocated a lot of their troops to other parts of the front line because of Ukraine's recent constant breakthrough attempts in other areas. A higher quality video from the same location most likely filmed before shows a Russian BTR firing towards Ukrainian positions while on its way to evacuate Russian troops. In this video the tracers of the BTR's cannon are very well visible and give the scene a laser-like touch. In general there are 3 to 5 rounds between each tracer so the amount of fire sent out is quite high. That indicates that they were under tense pressure by the Ukrainians who tried to gain a foothold on the Russian held side of the river. It is also reported that the Russian left this particular location shortly after. The deep state map also shows the area not under direct Russian control. However it also does not show the Russian side of the river under Ukrainian control what could mean that while it can be possible that the Russians left the vicinity of the bridge the banks on the Russian side are still contested at this point. I included a lot of footage from both sides this time. Also this is a mix of longer and shorter clips so make sure to watch the whole video. Even if you already saw some scenes from here, there might be a clip you missed. As promised I try to make more longer Ukraine war update videos, but I need your feedback for this. Make sure to leave a comment and like. This shows me you are interested in seeing more of this format. Also it helps the videos gaining more impressions what then raises more attention on the realities of this conflict for the public. These videos take a little longer to make since I cannot just upload the clips without any added information or just two sentences added like other channels are allowed to. Here we can see a squad of Russian soldiers approaching the BTR. The BTR has to be mounted from the side. This together with its poor armor is one of the main disadvantages of this vehicle. The door is relatively small and getting in and out of it especially during hairy situations can be difficult. Most of the time the soldiers ride on top of it because of this. This however is also no perfect solution since this takes away the little protection the BTR has to offer. All in all mounting and dismounting times take longer in general because of this design flaw making it not the ideal vehicle in this situation. The Ukrainians also responded with heavy fire and tracers flying towards the Russian direction could be seen as well. Seems like the fire was sent at the Russians from the Ukrainian held bank of the river. It looks like a Ukrainian vehicle catch fire on their side of the river. What is pretty insightful here is that the video depicts the real range of such engagements pretty well. People often miss the fact that such engagements take place at longer distances than a normal movie or video game would show. Great reminder for the public here and an important thing to note. In response to the events Russia has released footage of an alleged Iskander missile strike on the Ukrainian beachhead. They claim to have taken out a Ukrainian HQ with it but I cannot confirm this from the footage alone. Speaking of Russian footage here is another interesting video released by a Telegram account affiliated to Russian Marines. It shows a Russian soldier in a fighting hall evading a Ukrainian drone dropped grenade after aiming at the drone with his PKM machine gun. The drone can be heard flying above the soldier as he drops the rifle shortly after the attempt and climbs out of the hole while making a low profile. The explosion of the allegedly dropped grenade can be heard but there is no visual indication in the form of dirt or other visual things that can confirm this video for sure. However such things happen and so I put it in for you guys to discuss. What do you think? 
Does it make sense to put time and effort to stage such a situation? I do not think so, to be honest, but I am eager to hear your take on this, because people always complain I would only report one-sidedly I included a fair share of Russian release footage this time. This video shows a Russian marksman firefight recorded on a helmet cam. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the soldiers you see in this video are part of a special forces group of the Central Military District. The Russian Ministry of Defense states that these marksmen are used in Paris to suppress enemy firing spots and machine gun positions. There are a few helmet cam videos showing soldiers using marksman rifles, but in general the videos are more slowly paced for obvious reasons. I do not know where exactly this took place. The area and nature of the engagement looks like criminal, but I cannot confirm this right now. In the end, there are a lot of wooded areas in Ukraine, so this being in Kremina is only speculation on my part. The original video showed hits recorded on Thermal View, but I had to cut it out. I hope you understand this. I try to keep this channel as human as possible while giving you an as accurate overview of the situation as I can. If you appreciate this, let me know through a like. No comment on this. Someone else has to explain this thing. <laughs> Ukrainian soldiers released a video claiming to show the downing of a Russian Su-25 by a Ikla in the eastern part of Ukraine. The video was recorded on a helmet camera and shows the missile being launched at the Russian plane. The hit in the distance is also visible. This video claims to show the destruction of a Russian command post with a GMLRS in Verknotoretsk in the Donetsk blast. The clip is quite short and just shows the hit on a building. No footage of previous observations showing Russian troops going in and out. However, same with the Russian strike video on a Ukrainian HQ before I included this to be fair. However, I cannot say for sure that this was a GMLRS strike. Looks more like normal artillery. Russians have released two clips showing captured Ukrainian mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles being towed away. One of the vehicles appears to be a British Husky. According to the Russians, they plan to restore the equipment and use it for its intended purpose against the Ukrainian army. I am sure if scenes like this will continue to appear, it will create quite a discussion for the public in NATO countries. However, these things happen and have to be counted and to be honest, nobody likes this, but it is how it is right now. Also, the Ukrainians already took revenge and here we can see the tide turn when a Ukrainian mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle tows a captured Russian BTR away. I do not know if this is a good trait, but these two videos from both sides show the nature of psychological cyber warfare pretty well. Both sides trying to show their superiority to each other and the public to make an impact on morale. Speaking of the BTR, here we see a pair of Ukrainian BTR vehicles in action filmed from a camera strapped to the turret of one of the vehicles. I believe this BTR is a BTR-80 variant. The vehicles are seen driving in a mix of urban and flat terrain while engaging Russian positions. There is no long history of first-person turret cam footage from this vehicle so seeing them fire and maneuver here is quite interesting. The BTR-80 is an armored personnel carrier that has gained recognition for its reliability and effectiveness in various military operations. Developed in the late 1970s, this versatile vehicle has seen widespread service across different conflicts. Designed with six-wheel drive and a powerful engine, the BTR-80 offers excellent mobility on both urban and off-road terrains. Its armored hull provides protection against small arms fire and shell fragments, ensuring the safety of its occupants. At least a little bit, equipped with a 14.5mm heavy machine gun and a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun, the BTR-80 possesses firepower capabilities that enable it to engage enemy forces and provide cover for friendly troops. This armament allows for suppression and defensive measures during offensive operations. The BTR-80 can accommodate up to 10 fully equipped soldiers, facilitating rapid troop deployment and battlefield resupply. Its spacious interior can promote communication and coordination among the troops when the engine is running slowly. Otherwise, it can get quite loud. Additionally, the BTR-80's amphibious capabilities enable it to operate in both land and water environments. It can swim at a speed of up to 10 km per hour, enabling river crossings and amphibious assaults when needed. The vehicle's wide usage is attributed to its availability and endurance. Its sturdy design and consistent performance have made it a trusted asset for armed forces worldwide. It is good for recall missions but has big problems when facing a well-equipped enemy. That's it for this video guys. I tried to keep the short footage more balanced this time with clips from both sides. If you liked it make sure to leave a like. Also comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to support me further you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching.